Hello everyone, welcome to a different kind of video again. Today we're going to be looking at a specific function and how we can do it. Uh, this time we're going to be looking at how we can find the closest of a class of actor or a closest of a group of actors uh, to another actor. So a little bit of pre-work was done before setting up the video, which is I've created a find actors actor. If I open it up, in the it is just a sphere with an arrow which is currently hidden which changes based on this variable shown arrow. So if I enable it, it just enables the arrow itself. In the construction actor, you can see it's literally based on the show arrow, set the visibility, and that's literally it. Uh, the other actor is the master actor, which is going to be a cube, uh, which is it's got no script in it at the moment because that's what we're going to work through. And we're going to find all the closest of the find actors. Let me just drag them out to that cube and we're going to set that actor to show arrow and it should show the arrow so just to make sure if I click play nothing happens and if I was to click on one and change the show arrow then we get the arrow shown so in the mast actor or the actor that you want to be found the closest thing to so you need to go to the event graph and we're going to just use a customer event, but you can put this anywhere you like. We're going to go find closest. Again, it's going to be called find actor, but you can use whatever you like. And first thing we need to do is we need to get a list of all the actors. So we need to get all actors and we're going to promote that to a variable. Now this can just be a generic actors array, it doesn't have to be a specific one of this, uh, but we're doing that so that we can edit it afterwards. So we want get our actors and we've got the list of all our actors. Now we need to run a for each loop. Through those actors. And what we want to do is we want to get the actor location. <coughs> get actor location and we want to get the actor location of ourselves which is the master actor and if we subtract one from the other that gives us the difference or the uh, the distance between them and if we do vector length that changes it to a float variable. So if we go print string and run that all across there, and in the begin play, we just run find the closest sector. If we push play now, we should see a whole bunch of numbers which are unreal units for how close they are. So if I just do it from here so you can actually see, so the closest one from just looking at it very quickly is 342, which I would imagine is going to be this one. So if I bring up, no, it will be this one here that's hidden away. So try that one out. The next one's going to be 37. So we can move that one over there and change the numbers just slightly. So it's all well and good that we have the distances for each one, but what we need to do is we need to make sure that we only select the closest actor. So we need to, for the first one, set uh, set distance. So promote that to a variable. Well, we'll call it closest distance. And we're going to create a new variable. No, we're not. Uh, I'm called closest distance. And in the compile and save, so you can edit the default value. And in the default value, put it to something like 20,000 or 200,000. Anything 
stupidly massive that anything was going to be closer to. Now we can go vector length if that is less than. The closest distance, which in this case is 20,000 or 200,000. Then we want to set the closest distance to that. And we also want to set the array index to closest index. This means that we can grab whatever it is that is the closest afterwards as well. So it's not just a distance number that we have access to. Just going to tidy the numbers around a little bit. The wires. So now it's going to run through each one. If it's less than 20,000, then it's going to reset the closest distance to 20,000. And the closest index it's going to set to that. So we're going to people that to nothing. Then if it's not closer, then it's going to ignore it and it's going to go straight back to the next option. So now if I go to complete and we go print string and we go closest index. Okay, so from the completed, if we go down, we do print string and we plug in the closest index, we should get a number every time and it should be the same one. So we have two. And spring over to this window. Two. Two. But if we were to change, for example, that one over there, that one over there, this one over there. And play again, we have five as the closest one. So now we have our index, so we can get a reference. So we, we want to make a change. So we want to grab out the actors. And get a copy. Because this doesn't have access to the others. Okay, sorry about that. I just have to make a couple of quick changes. Uh, so we are going to go into the find actors actor. And we're going to move this from the construction script to a new event just called arrow visibility. Obviously, this is purely for the tutorial. You can use whatever function you want. Uh, but this is purely just for here. Uh, and then in the master actor, what we're going to do is we're going to grab our out actors. We're going to get a copy. And we want to grab the closest index. And then from here, we want to set the show arrow variable. And then we also want to change the arrow visibility, which is the event that I just created. So running through the script, it's going to get all the actors of class. But it's going to save that as a variable. And then for each one, it's going to see, is it closer than the closest? In, by default it's 200,000 and then it's going to find the so if I push play uh, now you should see an arrow light up above the closest oh and if I move that one further away you should see the closest one next light up and just to prove it's not just set so I can move that one behind that one and then it still be that one because that's still the closest one. So there you have it. I mean, you can have this set up in other ways as well. Uh, so here is one way of doing it with a master actor where you have the the command there. What you the other option, of course, is you can set it up in a library. So you can create a, a into a new macro. So if you go to blueprint and we can change that to a blueprint function library. Whatever, whatever you like and we can say get closest actor of class we can have class uh, we want this just to be 
plain actor class variable. Get all actors of class. Now we want this one just to be a plain actor array, so it promotes a local variable. It should just be plain actors. And then we can have the exact same commands as we have here. And then down here, instead of adding what we would do, we can add a return node with the closest index, which is an integer, and the closest distance, which is a float. Sorry. Right click to promote the variables. And then we can plug them in. I have just recreated these variables because that is an issue with libraries. Uh, after that, what we can need to do is we need to change this target here. So we need to go add an input. We're going to call it uh, master actor and make sure it is a actor reference and not an actor class. Drag that into actor location, not the old node, but just that. And it's going to do exactly the same thing as that previous, uh, the previous thing. So we can go take all that away, get closest actor of class, which comes from the library. And we want the find actors. And the master actor in this case is going to be self. Now the difference here is because we don't have the array available, we need to go, uh, we need to grab that array. So a new library, we can actually add the outputs of the actor array. Bar and save. Then in the master right we've got the array, so you want to get a copy of the index, cast to find actors, just so we can access the variables, and then we can show arrow and arrow visibility. So now if we go back here and click play, it should do the exact same. Okay, and after a couple of crashes, uh, let's push play and we have the closest one lit up. And if we move that one away, then the next closest will light up. So just as we had before, we have an array and we want that item minus the master item, check the distance, and then grab the index. It's exactly the same, apart from we can now use that in anything by adding it to a Blueprint library. So there you go. Uh, thank you very much. If there's any other specific functions you want me to take a look at, please let me know in the comments or add my, join my Discord in the link in the description. And uh, I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much, guys. And hopefully there won't be a delay with the videos again. Um, I have come down with a, a bit of a flu, but uh, on the way back and uh, looking forward to it. Thank you very much.